welcome back to the swamp my friends and welcome if you are new. Today we're going to be sharing some terrifying and downright strange and allegedly true stories of cryptid encounters from viewers of the show just like yourself. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. Now, without further ado, let us jump right into these creepy and downright strange encounters with cryptid creatures that'll freak you out tonight. Today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit and the swamp's number one go-to. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like, delivered right to your door. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm-fresh ingredients, and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep with no hassle, less food wasted, and it makes it super simple. Most of these recipes can be done within about 15 minutes and are designed to help minimize mealtime stress. There's calorie smart options, protein smart options, pretty much anything you're looking for for your diet. So, what are you waiting for? Join me and many others in the swamp today. Go to HelloFresh.com slash swamped free and use code swamped free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash swamped free with code swamped free. Something Worse Than a Bear by Braxton Hi Swamp Dweller, my name is Braxton Pierce. I've sent you a few stories about some of my experiences at home here in Georgia, but what I'm about to tell you happened last summer when my wife and I went to Washington State for a week-long camping trip. We brought our camper with us to a reserved spot in Eatonville. It was amicable and warm during the whole week. Anyway, the first two nights were great as we cooked up some chicken and beans on our grill and roasted some marshmallows to make some s'mores for a little nighttime snack. The third night is when we had this crazy experience. A loud sound had woken me up a little after midnight. And then it woke my wife as our kids and babies soon were sound asleep. They can sleep through anything. Whatever we heard wasn't that far from our campsite, as it could have easily been about 10 to 15 yards away. It let out this strange whooping sound, and we could smell it. It smelled like hot garbage and roadkill combined. It was unbearable. Do you know how most campers have those dim yellow lights on outside? Well, we could see the lights from the inside window, and the smell got worse as this thing walked right in front of the yellow light of our camper. Now, my first thought was a bear, but bears don't typically stand on two feet for no good reason. All the food we ate we made sure to cover up and had all the leftovers because there were grizzly bears around. We even cleaned the grill so they won't smell the food from it. This creature had to be standing at around 7 or maybe even 8 feet tall, and we heard it make this low growling sound. Now, I've been around quite a few bears in my life, and I've never heard them make a noise like this. So at this point, we're about 100% certain this was no bear. My wife and I were frozen solid, and I could see tears running down her cheeks. I whispered as silently as I could. Out of nowhere, this thing suddenly makes a loud whooping sound again. This time it does it in groups of two, and it sounds much louder because it's right in front of the RV. Our camper even shook a little bit as it was walking around us. It had eventually left about 30 or so minutes later, and we could eventually go to sleep. 
The next day, we woke up at about 7 a.m. We stepped out of the camper and saw other people outside gathered around, looking at these absolutely massive footprints that the creature left behind in front of us. I asked them, Excuse me, we heard this thing last night. Did you guys hear it? Most everybody said they did. Look what it did right in front of your guys' camper. I looked at the set of footprints in total shock while everybody else was getting pictures of it. Everybody packed up and went home, even us. We even got our money back for the spot. I decided to inform the BFRO team to investigate the prints, and they got negative results, saying there weren't any known prints of the local wildlife, so it was likely 100% a Bigfoot. We personally decided to never go back there again, but the BFRO teams have been doing more investigations in that area, so hopefully we'll get more good hard evidence of these things. Thanks for sharing my story. Bigfoot in Alabama by Bradley G. Hello Swamp Dweller. I'm a big fan and have been listening for quite some time. Anyway, this is my encounter with what I believe to be a Bigfoot. A bit of background. I am a pretty avid outdoorsman. I grew up in the woods and always knew about Bigfoot, but never thought I'd see one. So to set the scene, it was 2016, maybe 2017, around New Year's time. Also, my birthday, and my family decided to take my best friend Lorenzo and myself to Alabama. I live in Texas, to visit some distant relatives for my birthday. We hung out with the family for a while and eventually gave up, and went to hang out in the woods like we always did. Anyway, Lorenzo, my cousin Tyler, and I explored the woods. While doing so, we came across an old abandoned mobile home. So we looked around and entered. Breaking typical teen stuff, we finished exploring the house and walked into the master bedroom, where we found a massive nest made from pine branches. We were in the mobile home for about 25 or 30 minutes when suddenly we heard this ungodly roar come from right outside. Then, the home started to rock back and forth violently, to the point it felt like it was going to tip over with us in it. So we crawled out of a hole in the ceiling and started running. As we returned to the house, I turned my head and I swear on everything I know that's true, I think I saw a Bigfoot. As I looked at this massive creature, it locked its eyes with me and it started chasing us back to the house. We even cut through three yards between my cousin's house and the woods and it stopped at the edge of the woods and watched us walk into the house. I wish I could say that was the end, but unfortunately, it's not. In the middle of the night, I awoke to my cousin and Lorenzo telling me to shh, it's right outside the window, so I go to peek through the blinds. And when I part them there, I was staring face to face with this thing, and it looked angry to say the least. So we grabbed the guns and went outside where we saw it, and there was nothing. So I take out an alternative cigarette and stare into the woods. We go to the abandoned mobile home about halfway in there, and I feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I slowly turned around, and there it is, only a couple of feet away. This thing again looks absolutely angry, so being a bit inebriated now after my alternative cigarette, I do the only thing that I can assume to do. I run. I book it all the way back to the house with my friends as we're hooting and hollering the whole time, absolutely scared out of our mind. And yes, we're loaded to the teeth with guns, but running was honestly probably the best option. Eventually. Once we all made it to the house and calmed down, and got our wits about ourselves, we decided that we would never talk about this again. We don't want to sound crazy, we don't want people to think that we're some crazy yahoos out there. But I know what I saw, and I know what we experienced. The Tickle Monster by Hauntingly Familiar 2 It all started when I was just a wee lass. 
Now, I've been dealing with ghost-related stuff for most of my life, but this is the strangest occurrence. Every night, from the age of four to seven, maybe even eight, I would have chronic sleep paralysis. Anyone who has ever experienced sleep paralysis knows how frightening this can be. My experiences were just a little different. I would be visited by a creature that I named the Tickle Monster. It was always the same thing. The first thing that would happen would be a sign popping up where the bed meets the wall. It was generally written in blood. The sign would say, He's coming. He's here. Or something ominous. Then, the window or door would be open, and he would appear. I am trying to remember his exact appearance. However, I remember that he had long dreadlocks, a pale complexion, and long, bony fingers that were more like claws. He would approach my bed and proceed to quote-unquote tickle me. Being a child... I didn't know how to describe what he was doing, but that was the closest description I could come up with. This was not a joyful or fun experience, though. I wouldn't be able to move or scream, and once he finished tickling me, he would just leave. I would fully wake up and call my father or my mother, and this happened almost every single night, and the sequence of events would mostly stay the same. My mother would try to get me to communicate with the tickle monster as if he were real. This thing it had an ungodly mouth. Its mouth was full of razor-sharp, shark-looking teeth. She never doubted what I was experiencing was legitimate, but nothing really ever came of it. I don't know if she thought it was just something in my brain and it would go away after a while, or if it was a legitimate experience. One night, it just stopped and never happened again. I've only had two instances of sleep paralysis since that time, and neither of them had anything to do with the Tickle Monster. I've looked this up online to see if anybody else had this experience, but I'm not, I'm not having any help finding it. My manager told me of a voodoo demon who would steal children in the middle of the night or something like that, but I'm not sure it's an exact match. Part of me thinks that this was a product of an overactive imagination, but there's still a part of me that believes it could have been something more, maybe some sort of cryptid, paranormal entity, or some other otherworldly creature. The Blob Monster by Anonymous So it was around February of 2017. I was 15 years old and had a dry throat at the time. For that year, I wanted to build a shed in the middle of the woods of my backyard Maybe just to go hang out in as a fun project to do for the summer months. So on a cold, dry, windy, but sunny day, probably around noonish or late morning, I started the hike alone in the woods of my backyard to find the perfect spot to put down this shed. The shape and the geography of the property section with the woods are weird. The woods part of the property pokes out like the Oklahoma panhandle, and to get to the deepest woods of my property where I wanted to build the shed, you must walk up a hill and then that hill eventually plateaus. Also, that hill is easily the tallest in the general area. And on the day my encounter happened, I was to see hundreds if not thousands of feet, especially since there were no leaves on the trees. It's a two minute hike. You can see things like rusty barrels and metal fences in the woods, mainly because my backyard woods were a popular hunting spot back in the day. This is evident with the rusty metal barrels and beer cans I can find dating back to the 1980s. I hiked through the property and reached the Plateau Hill part. Also note that someone's house was probably 100 feet from where I was. I had a pretty good view of the entire property, and there was also a barn in someone's house quite far from us where I could see way out in the distance. So for a few minutes I started looking for a good spot to put this shed. I eventually picked one and imagined how to build the shed. I wanted to start from scratch. While doing this, I heard a five-note whistle, song type thing in the distance. Now, I'm no musician, but I will try to describe it. It was like two long flat notes with a short break between two and then the next note. A higher pitch swinging note followed. Then quickly, an average swinging note then back to a long flat note with a higher pitch than the first two, and whoever was whistling 
kept repeating it and had lungs of steel. Now, I honestly looked around for quite a few minutes to see if I could find whoever was whistling. It sounded like it was coming from deeper into the woods, way downhill, but I didn't see anyone. I also checked the house and the barn to see if I could see anyone, and sure enough, there was not a living, breathing soul. I also thought that I didn't hear the rustling of leaves either. The whole woods were covered in them, and the rustling of leaves was loud and could easily give away your location. But there wasn't any rustling. I immediately ignored it, as probably one of my neighbors or something. Also, please note that the whistling was not an animal, but a human. It had to be. Birds have chirp-like whistles, but this was a lot more breathy like a human. So I returned to my spot, content that it was a person probably just walking through the woods. That was the most logical conclusion. But the whistling kept getting closer and louder, still playing the same five notes. And still, I could not see a single person, heard no rustling of leaves or anything like that. I was very stubborn that it wasn't something paranormal and had to be a human. Even though whatever was whistling was coming towards me and I still had no clue who or what was whistling. The whistling was going on for over a couple of minutes now and eventually it sounded so close to me that it felt like somebody was literally on top of me. It sounded like the whistling was also coming from all directions at this point. So now I started to get a little bit spooked. I concluded that whatever this whistling was coming from had to be a threat. So I started returning to my house. It was only like a two or three minute hike. It's not like I was terribly far out like I said. I didn't run out of there or anything like that. I walked back as home as possibly calm as I could. I was spooked but not terrified or anything. I also felt like if I ran then whatever was whistling at me would pop out and chase me. So I walked and stayed calm to keep whatever it was at a stalking taunting phase. It sure did feel like whatever was whistling at me was stalking and taunting me. Now. I must be honest, this next part of my experience felt quite trance-like, so I could have just hallucinated this part and the whistling. I've had things like sleep paralysis episodes several times in my life, and when I'm exhausted, I do sometimes hallucinate stuff. But I wasn't tired at the time, nor had I had an hallucination episode for quite a long time. All of my tired hallucinations and sleep paralysis episodes last from a fraction of a second to several seconds. So if this were a hallucination, this would be the most crazy, in-depth, longest one I've ever had. So back to my story. I'm about a minute away from making it to my house's backyard, still hearing the whistling. I decided to look up and there it was. Something that was all gray, blurry, with no facial features. A humanoid looking thing. It was flying above me counterclockwise. It could have been about five to six feet in height with a wingspan around the same. The thing had the silhouette of a person with a head, two arms, torso, and legs. It looks like a T with a circle on top, acting like its head. It was almost like a blob. It almost had like no body definition. I trusted my gut and instead of running, I kept walking despite the threats it kept me as safe for this long, I thought I'd keep doing it. Then finally, I took one step onto the grass in my backyard and suddenly everything weird stopped. There was no more whistling. The flying thing was gone, and that feeling of foreboding and being in a trance absolutely dissipated. I remembered smelling roses, though like it was peaceful. After that experience, I wanted to build something other than a shed in the woods. For years, even a little bit to this day, I hate being near that backyard alone. I took a long time to discuss this story because I honestly just ruled it as some sort of paranormal ghost encounter. The gray thing was possibly an angel or something like that. But after I looked on this thing called Cryptid Wiki and heard about the Kinderhook Blob Monster, there were kind of similarities to what I had experienced and I did notice that there were other things called Blob Sightings. First. I don't live crazy far from Kinderhook. I could easily take a drive over there in like 30 minutes. Two, I saw a blob-like creature that sounds exactly like that monster. So I'm not saying that's what it was, but I have a good idea that I met the blob monster.
You have graciously shared some of my stories in the past, so I wanted to send you in another. My name is Evan, and I think I just had the weirdest encounter of my entire life. In one of my previous stories I mentioned me and my friend were heading to Ocean City, a popular beach in Maryland, about three hours from where I live. Well, I decided to go down again and spend some time at our condo, just relaxing and taking a load off. Summer has been very wacky due to the pandemic, so I did not plan on spending a lot of time down on the beach. I am one of those people who enjoy the beach vibes but do not like going down on the sand or getting in the water all that much. Well, unless I am more alone and there are not loads of people clogging up the beach. Well, I drove down in my Chevy Nova on July 21st. It was just me this time, although my family was planning on joining me a couple of weeks later. So anyway, I sped all the way there, wanting to avoid stopping at all. When I pulled up, I hopped out shutting the Nova's door and running up to the condo. I unloaded all of my bags onto one of those hotel wheel carts that they sometimes have in elevators. Our condo has one for whatever reason, and it was much more efficient than running up and down the stairs carrying my bags. Well, once I got everything in the room, I stepped onto the balcony. We were on floor 5 of the complex, and it was a beachfront. I cannot tell you how nice it was to wake up to the sound of crashing waves every morning. Anyway, the ocean looks very choppy, but there are loads of people down on the beach, not caring for six foot of space at all. Well, that was not going to be me, I thought, as I headed back inside. It began to rain at around 2pm, and the beach was basically clear. I jumped on this opportunity and ran down, and surf fished for about an hour and a half rain pouring down on me the entire time. I caught nothing, but when I fish, I feel alive. It is one of those things like bow hunting for me that just sends me to my happy place. So the first night passes and I order some seafood for dinner and go back to bed under freshly changed sheets. I wake up and make some coffee. I had brought down my Nintendo Switch, but I felt like I was being called to get off my butt and do something outdoors. That feeling won over, and I decided what better way to spend a nice day at the beach than to go to Assateague Island. For those who don't know, Ocean City is basically a massive sandbar, and several islands and small specks of land are surrounding it. One such place is Assateague. It is a national park, and my next door neighbor who is studying to be a park ranger really got me into going to national parks. The great thing about Assateague is that it's basically multiple environments in one. Let me briefly explain. The island has protected marshland, as well as beaches. It is also a swampland, and is rather big, with forested sections. Basically, one massive natural playground for those who like being in the great outdoors. There are also horses that have been there for generations living on the island wild. They have a dune trail for off-road vehicles like jeeps and certain type of pickup trucks. But since my Nova is from 1970, and sand basically equals rust on a classic car like that, it was a no-go. But I drove down and parked in one of the visitor lots. I hopped out and decided which way to go. I first hit the swamp trails and the mosquitoes destroyed me. Cursing at my stupid choice not to bring bug spray, I finished that trail. I then took the marsh path and waded in the beautiful marsh waters, seeing crabs and small fish dart by my legs. No, I know nothing scary has happened yet, and I'm sorry about that, but it will soon, I promise. Anyway, I find a good stretch of beach to lay out on. I did manage to remember to bring a towel, and so I laid out on the sand and closed my eyes. My bag and my Nova's keys were next to me, but I was not worried about this thievery. One, the park was basically empty, at least my part was anyway, and two, I'm 6'2" and I let my hair grow out to my shoulders. I look like a madman when I'm not properly groomed, but I would never hurt a fly. Anyway, I lost track of time. I probably got to the beach and laid down around 12. Well, my stupid self wakes up and it's already getting dark. I cursed my stupidity as I began to sit up. I screamed. I was sunburned so badly. I had put on sunblock, but I, I guess it had worn off. My body felt like it was flaming, 
and tears welled up in my eyes. I have had some horrendous injuries in my time, but sunburns are bad. If you have not ever had a bad one, imagine your skin bubbling and peeling away before your eyes as you are as red as a dang tomato. Now, here is where the scary stuff begins. As I'm trying to figure out how to hobble back to my car, I hear a loud splash. Normally, I would not think much of anything about it. There are some exceptionally large fish and even sharks off the coast of Ocean City and Assateague. I even once caught a nine-foot sand tiger shark near Assateague two years prior, but that is beside the point. I realized that this splashing was maybe seven feet out. That was very odd. The chances of a big fish being that close to shore and making that much noise were slim, to say the least. I dropped my bag and my keys as I slowly and painfully got to my feet. It took maybe five steps to get to the water when it made a sound I will never forget. Picture the cries of a mountain lion mixed with the low calls of a large whale. It was scary, sad, and entrancing all in one. Extremely hard to explain, honestly. My mind immediately went to tales of sirens and mermaids whose haunting calls would lure in unsuspecting sailors to their demise. I did not believe there were mermaids. I am not a skeptic by any means, but mermaids just seem so far out. We have only explored 2% of our oceans though, so honestly who knows what's out there. These thoughts and many more swirled around my brain as I backed farther and farther away from the crashing waves. The waves were much smaller now, and whatever made that noise was splashing my way. I began to hurry back and grab my bag. I sped out of there like a bat out of hell, back towards my car in safety. I spat profanities as I realized my keys to the Nova were back on the beach. I half hobbled, half sprinted to the spot I had just left, all the while feeling my skin peel and burn. I shone my phone light on the spot in the sand where I had just been. I saw them, baseball slits scraping my knees, and snatched the keys. As I went to get up, I met its gaze. It was the strangest thing I had ever seen. It was pale, almost translucent, like a jellyfish. Its skin looked aged but strong and muscular. Its legs were long and strangely tall like a basketball player, but there was not an inch of hair that I could see. The hands looked amphibious, and it had what almost resembled a tail. Its face was the real horror though. It looked like a clean mannequin face that you would see clothing being hung on in a department store. Except for a nose and a tiny slit which I assumed was its mouth. It was featureless. My heart was in my throat as I felt sweat pouring down my face. I, for whatever reason, smiled at it like a fool, maybe thinking this thing had some sort of emotions. It then smiled back, although it was all wrong. The tiny slit of a mouth began to expand, the face ripping and tearing apart to form an abnormally large grin. Blood trickled down this thing's face as it smiled back at me, with razor-sharp teeth glinting in my phone's flashlight. It is something that will haunt me to my dying day. I ran, screaming like a little girl. I was surprised no park ranger had heard my scream. As I ran back to my car yelling, I heard it scream back almost mocking me in a way. I got into my car and sped out of there. When I got to the condo, I ran upstairs as fast as I could. I locked the door behind me and began breathing erratically. When I composed myself, I sat down on the couch and basically passed out. The next day, I went to the local clinic and got my burns checked out. They gave me a prescription lotion to help with the burns and I went home immediately. I looked everywhere for an explanation of what I saw. It cannot be a skimwalker because I am almost certain they do not go into the water and do not live in marshes like that. Could it be aliens? Maybe some other shapeshifting cryptid? I don't know. Thanks again Swamp Dweller for sharing my story and encounter. I really like your channel, it has kept me going through these rough times. If anybody in the comments has any idea what this thing could be, please let me know.
I have always kept an open mind about the creatures that can roam our world. Partly because I'm inquisitive by nature, and partly because of my mother. She always taught us to be aware of our surroundings and respect nature. One of the first things she taught me was to listen to the animals. They will tell you if something is out there. One time, years ago when I was a teenager, we had traveled to my dad's hometown in Texas for a family reunion. His hometown is small. You can walk through the central part of the town in less than an hour, and everyone else lived in homes further out usually. They usually had about an acre or more of land around their homes, which was very nice and private. In the evening, we had joined my dad's large family at a hoedown near the edge of town. There were people dancing and drinking and having a good time, while me, my brother, and one of our cousins and her friend just hung out watching the festivities. We were talking about these teenager things that you'd always talk about, you know? Just who we liked or disliked at school, etc., you know? We looked out towards the edge of the party, where a fence bordered the location. We were at this separated area, where it separated the yard from the scrubland on the edge of town. We could not see far out since night had fallen, and the lights on the poles of the fence only illuminated the fence and the brush around it. As I looked out, I noticed something, an object that was half hidden by a small tree, but odd in that it was not swaying in the breeze like the rest of the foliage. I pointed it out to my brother and cousin, who spotted it as well. As we observed it, a few things became clear. It was a creature, about five feet tall if I had to guess. It was a tawny brown color, like a coyote. One of us asked if... What it was was a coyote, but we could definitely tell it wasn't, it was just too big. We cautiously, or foolishly, made our way closer to the fence till we were only 20 yards away from it. This thing was a further 10 yards from the fence on its side, just far enough to be out of the range of the light. We stopped in our tracks as we could see enough to make out that this creature wasn't something we'd ever seen in our lives. It was a creature, covered in fur hunched over on long legs, with human-like arms, long, gnarled hands ending in sharp claws. Its head was half hidden by the tree, but we could see a canine-like head with a long snout and pointed ears, just like a coyote. It was staring at us, and we were staring at it. We quickly ran back to the party, realizing that we were closer to this thing than we were to our own families. If this dog man, a term we didn't know at the time, was as fast as the werewolves we had seen in movies, the fence would have been no obstacle for this thing to get us if it felt so inclined. We were all shocked into silence. Once we were back at the hoedown, we just sat there and looked at each other. Did we just see that? Do creatures like that really exist? We were simply stunned at this encounter. We didn't even know who would believe us, so we just said nothing. The next day, my family was heading back to Oklahoma. My brother and I were secretly relieved considering what we had seen. But my cousin and her friend lived in Texas, in my dad's hometown, which was part of that thing's territory. I hope she never had to see it again. I quickly moved on from that night, but that encounter has always been in the back of my mind. As time went on, and I learned about creatures that people have seen in the woods, I heard at least a name put to what we had seen, and I hoped I'd never see anything like that again. But as they say, careful what you wish for. In 2019, I was out of my boss's farm for a three-day work excursion in the summer. His farm is about an hour away from Oklahoma City, and 80 acres of land that's mostly woods and pretty isolated his nearest neighbor is probably over a mile away. I have been to his farm many times over the years and was very familiar with the woods around his place. There was a trail that led into the woods from the compound, and I'd walk it every morning with his dog when I came to work there. I never walked to this trail alone, and never unarmed. Not because I was worried about Dogman or Bigfoot, but because wild boar was known to live in the area and they were the ones I was worried about. In all the years I had been up here, I had never heard about Bigfoot or Dogman being seen in the area, but plenty of boar. 
On this particular day, I set out towards the trail in the late afternoon, his dog Buddy right at my side. The trail was not exactly well traveled, and it was more grass than dirt. Halfway down the trail, where it was more open ground, I could already see a few deer tracks, some raccoons, even an armadillo scrape in the ground. As I was counting the different tracks, Buddy wandered off the trail into the trees to sniff at something that caught his attention or find a place to pee. I called out to him to not wander far, stepping towards the edge of the trail to do so. As I did, I looked down and saw something that made my heart stop. Right at the edge of the trail, right where the bare earth gave way to grass, was a large canine-like footprint. Bigger than any footprint Buddy could ever hope to make. As he was a 75 pound German Shepherd, and I have a 150 pound Great Dane at home, and even his paws aren't this big, I put my size 10 boot next to it, and the track was over half the size of my boot. It was decently fresh, no more than 24 hours old if I had to take an educated guess. I looked back from where the track led, but could not find any more tracks of this thing. It's like this thing jumped over the trail to avoid leaving prints in the dirt. Something jumped 15 feet across the trail to avoid leaving any trace of itself. I quickly looked around and strained my ears, but I could still hear the birds singing, insects chirping, and even Buddy was calm and relaxed. I called Buddy back to my side and set off down the trail to get back towards the barn. I did not want to stay any longer in case whatever made those footprints was still in the area. Further along the trail it became more surrounded by trees and leaves covered the trail. It's only because I had walked this trail so many times that I knew how not to get lost. But as I navigated the trail, I noticed a large branch that was right on the edge of it. Branches were nothing new on the trail of course, and with the ice storm that had occurred over the winter, many trees had lost a lot of branches. This one itself was 12 feet long and the size of my forearm at its thinnest and larger than my thigh at its thickest. But what made me notice this one was that it had been turned over. I could tell by the imprint in the leaves and dirt. While hogs could and would turn logs over for food, hogs did not do this. There were no hog tracks or scrapes around it, and I was mentally traced back to the trail behind me where I had seen that footprint. I realized that this branch was right in the line with the footprint. And when I noticed that, everything had fallen silent. No birds. No bugs. I looked for Buddy, but he was no longer at my side. He had continued up the trail and was now ten yards ahead of me. Looking back at me with a nervous posture and seemed to say, We need to go now. I briefly looked around me but saw nothing in the woods. But I remember my mom telling me that old phrase, You may not see them, but they can see you. I put a hustle in my step and caught up with Buddy, and we continued up the trail, and all but ran to the barn since I cleared the tree line. I couldn't help but think in the back of my mind once I was back inside. They're here. They're here in Oklahoma. It's foolish to assume that they just wouldn't be here, you know? For some reason I thought they may just stay in Texas because of the range or whatever. Despite me only actually seeing one in Texas, and only a track of one here. This week, my brother had told me that his co-worker thinks he saw a dogman on the edge of his property recently. His co-worker lives in El Reno, Oklahoma. My boss's farm is only 10 miles from that town. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true terrifying stories of cryptid sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to elbow that like button in the face as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it in the algorithm and that helps us grow the swamp. If you're new, why not join us? Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload new videos multiple times a week on all things natural and supernatural. 
If you're on the go but don't have YouTube Premium but still want to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and pretty much everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. Thank you guys so much for supporting the Swamp the way you do. I couldn't do this without you guys on a daily basis and I really appreciate it. Thank you.